let's go to the Dairy Max built by Chocolate Milk Hotline to bring in the head coach of the 7-1 and one Thorndale Bulldogs. We are pleased to be joined, 6-1 uh, and one rather, the, we are pleased to be joined uh, by Coach Scott Hawkins. Coach, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How are things in beautiful Thorndale, Texas? Oh, man, it is wonderful. It's always a great day to be a Bulldog. Well, it's been a great day to be a Bulldog more often than not this season. You guys are, are, are been off to a fantastic start. Uh, you know, 6-1, and one, uh, things are really rolling. Uh, you know, last week, a big win uh, over Hearn on the road. Um, you know, this is a squad that, you know, uh, ha- you know has, has kind of been on the build. It, it seems like you guys have really been building this 5-7 and seven last year. Uh, what is it that you would say is different about this year's Bulldog squad? Well, you know, I think it really what it is, just kind of the attitude of the kids a little bit is different. You know, we've got a group of kids that have really bought into our, our family concept and our, our concept of, you know, what we call holding the rope for each other and taking care of each other. Because uh, we've had a lot of kids had to step up. We've had a few injuries. I mean, last last week against Hearn, we had uh, three starters out and mm-hmm. had kids that had to step up, and, and they did a great job. Like, like you said, that was a great game, a real big win for us on the road. And I think that's been the the big difference. I mean, we're playing great defense this year, uh, but it's again more of a concept of the, the kids buying into what we're asking them to do and and believing in each other and believing their coaches and believing believing in what we're doing. Uh, yeah, you know, the the win on the road at Hearn is is kind of a, a program shaping win. Um, going into that game, I'm I'm really interested. You know, knowing what was on the line, knowing full well that you know a win there and you feel really really good, not just about you know you clinch a playoff spot, but also feel really good about finishing uh, at least. In in the top two in the district. Um, what was your message to the kids before that game? You know, like, like I try to tell them every week, you know, I mean, it, yes, it was a big game. They all knew it was a big game. The whole town knew it was a big game. Uh, we tell them it's a big game because of the game we're playing this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we knew they were talented coming in. Uh, they're very dangerous offensively for sure. Uh, just like I said, just talent all over the field. And just wanted them to focus. And, again, our message was for each of them to do their job. Uh, especially was important last week with uh, some of those starters out that they had to be able to do their job and they had to trust that their teammates were doing their jobs. And they really did that. Like I said, I, I'm the final, final drive that um, Hearn had, we had a bad punt and we, they started inside our territory, got two first downs and that defense, they never, they never gave up and kept fighting. There were a lot of teams that, you know, might've hung their head and figured it was over. So, you know, that's, that's the big thing. You know, that's what I told them. I was real proud of them for that. Uh, Coach, you, you're in your fourth year there at at Thorndale, and uh, you know one thing that's that's particularly interesting to me is is your your offensive style. You you came from Liberty Hill, and you brought with it uh, with you the slot T offense. Um, yes. Sir. Do do you get the feeling now in your fourth year, having been around these guys uh, for so long, that 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 has really stuck now, and you guys are are, are fully uh, bought in on on this style of offense? I do. I, I really do. I think, you know, uh, the offensive linemen from them to the running backs, they all have kind of bought in. Uh, you know, it was it was big shifts, of course, mm-hmm. uh, changing from the spread when I got to going to the slot tee, uh, you know, but just been building on it. And like I said, these are the kids I had since I was, since they were freshmen and they're at least the seniors anyway. And so they've been doing it for a while and they understand it more. And, you know, they kind of they get excited about things, you know, when they you know, because they get excited when somebody follows them on a fake. <laughs> and so, you know, that's that's what uh, we give them stickers for that when they get the people look at them to go on fakes. And, you know, this year with Jagger Rubio stepping mm-hmm. up and having more yardage, he's opened it up for like last week. Scott Guzman had 15 carries and 284 yards getting hurt mm-hmm. and four touchdowns. And Luke Lesper has been a staple in the offense for the last three years as well. And so now we got all three of those kids going. So, you know, we hope that the defense has to worry about all of them. Now we're talking with Scott Hawkins, the head coach of the Thorndale Bulldogs here on Texas Football Today. Get involved with the conversation at hashtag TF Today. Uh, coach, you know, I'm, I'm always interested in talking with coaches who run kind of this old st- old school style of offense, whether it's the slot T, the wing T, you know, the veer. Uh, you know, these are offenses that are not predicated on stars. Uh, these Correct. are these are these are offenses that aren't going to that aren't going to make uh, aren't going to aren't going to get people uh, headlines. How do you get these kids to buy in on a system knowing full well that this isn't going to be about personal glory? You know, a, a good, you know, you mentioned a good game for you is when you've got a defender following you when you don't have the ball. Um, how do you how do you get kids to buy in on something that's not predicated on on building superstars? Well, I tell you, it's not real easy, uh, especially with all that they see on Saturday and Sunday afternoons and stuff. Uh, but again, we've talked so much about 
a building like a family relationship, you know, and, uh, you know, it's all really about relationships anyways. And so, you know, I think we've got kids now that they do, they do believe in what we're doing. They, they can see how it can be successful. Uh, probably one thing I was more proud of last week is that our kids were getting excited for their teammates doing well, mm -hmm. you know? And so now we've gotten to that point, you take that, the selfishness away from it and, you know, you're starting to be excited for your teammates. I mean, that's, that's one of the more satisfying things for a coach anyways. And so the, we finally got a group that's uh, really into that and really excited about just, uh, you know, they take pride in it. The lineman, the lineman gets to take a lot of pride in what we do now. And so that kind of, we kind of talk about that all the time. You know, when they get 100-yard rushers, then they get extra stickers and things like that. You know, we do whatever we have to do to try to get them to, you know, feel like they're a part of it and that each player is a part of it. That's why we give those stickers for the fake, stuff like that, uh, just to make sure that everybody knows that all 11 are important, even though we're not slinging it around and people aren't having 500-yard passing games and things like that. Uh, you know, another thing that, that strikes me on, on the other side of the ball is pretty much every year that you've been there, this team has improved defensively. Uh, you guys yeah. gave up, you know, almost 40 points a game in, in 2016. I'm sure you don't want to remember that, so we'll move on. <laughs> no. uh, last year, you guys improved, you know, 28 and a half points a game, you know, a step forward. This year, defense has been arguably the strength of the team, uh, giving up just, Over. you know, just 15 points a game. Uh, what has been the difference for you guys defensively? Yeah, there's no doubt they have really stepped it up. And I was just talking to Jagger Rubio about this yesterday, mm -hmm. matter of fact. Uh, you know, one thing that's really helping us this year, I mean, Coach B-Tech and the coaching staff do a great job with our defense. You know, they always have. Just, uh, this year is kind of a little different. We, like, uh, none of the offensive line play much defense. And so we have our whole defensive line gets a lot of rest. Uh, our We have a linebacker crew that gets to rotate. And I think, you know, what has helped us was having a little rest and not being on the field the whole time. Because uh, we only have about three or four kids now that pretty much stay on the field the whole game which is uh, rather unique in our classification, mm -hmm. uh, especially since we only have like 38 kids on the team, you know, total, that's JV and varsity, because uh, we only travel with like 25, but we're able to utilize all those kids because we've got, again, all the kids that are willing to step up and they're playing way above their head, some of them. <laughs> and so, you know, when that happens, you, you're going to have some success. Um, the other thing uh, that, that strikes me, I want to go back to your first game of the year. You guys go and, and you take on Bremond, and Bremond is a – uh, a team, you know, you guys are, are pretty familiar with. And, and yes, beyond sir. that, uh, it, it's a team that has had that kind of success that, that you guys are aspiring to. Uh, and you guys go out there and, uh, I mean, to be real honest, you guys laid a lumber to them. You know, 34-8, to eight, a dominant victory. Yeah. Uh, how important do you think it was for you guys to get that kind of tone-setting win uh, in, in your first game? Honestly, I, th I think that was huge. I think that, that set the tone for the entire year. Uh, because, you know, Bremont has been, you know, it seems like I've been coaching against Bremont for 10, 15 years now. They've been really good. <laughs> and so, you know, that was the one that I think uh, helped our kids believe in what we were doing and then how we were doing things. And, uh, you know, that was, the, that was a game that started off showing how good our defense was. I mean, they had a, they only, uh, they had a shutout. It's the only score that Bremont even had was when the offense fumbled and they covered and took it back for a touchdown, mm -hmm. you know, so. Uh, but I think that was huge in kind of setting our tone and getting the kids to believe in themselves, you know, like we, like we as coaches thought they could be. So, uh, Let's talk about the schedule now because okay. this is certainly a, uh, a, a bit of a quirk. <laughs> uh, you guys, yeah. you guys, this is your second bye week. Uh, you guys were, were yeah. off in week one, uh, and now you're right. off in, in week ten. Um, right. can, can you tell us a little bit about how that happened? Well, yeah, I mean, we had, it was a realignment year. Yeah. And I had uh, I had Milano as week one, mm -hmm. and uh, they were in our they got put in our district, so I lost that game. And then I had Goldthwait on the back burners, and then he had to change one and pick up someone. And so I got Chilton, and we agreed to play. And then he called me about a month or two later, and uh, backed out of that, and I just couldn't find another game. Well, and it's, so it, yeah, we had to start the year without that first game, and that that worried me a great deal. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, especially then it made us start off with Bremont, and. Uh, and then we had a game get rained out mm -hmm. uh, in Dawson week four. So we started district having only played two ball games. Yeah, you guys entered, you know, you. Uh, I think people are looking at that. They're, th they're doing the math. They're going, okay, <laughs> right. uh, the six and one. So great season, right. but it's week yeah. 10 and they're off right. this week. Um, so I guess my question for you now is, you know, next week you guys draw a Marlin team that's, you know, they're mm -hmm. struggling, but you can't overlook anybody in district. Oh, no, sir. Um, uh, you know, I, I, what do you, what, uh, what are your goals this week? What are your goals as far as what do you want to accomplish in, in this year? Your, your, what seems like your third bye week? 
<laughs> well, honestly, we were just trying to heal up. We had a lot of a lot of bank, kids that were banged up. Like I said, we had three starters out against Hearn. Uh, so we're trying to get those kids healthy and just uh, giving the kids kind of a mental rest a little bit. Um, so, you know, we're still, we're still practice every day after school. Uh, matter of fact, normally we only practice up through Wednesday, but we're having a practice today. Uh, we did have a game. We found a game for our junior varsity, so they're getting to play this week. Um, but really it's just kind of try to rest, rest the mind, rest the body and try to keep them focused on what we have at hand. You know, cause that's the other thing. And, and one last question for Scott Hawkins, the sure. head coach here at, at, uh, at Thorndale, get involved in the conversation hashtag TF today, coach. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk and especially around this office cause we're high school football nerds. It's about, uh, two, <laughs> a division one, region four. Uh, you know, I, I know you, you know, you don't overlook anybody and Marlon's going to give you guys a push next week, whether you like it or not. Uh, but the playoffs are on the horizon and you guys are going to be thrust into what I think a lot of people consider to be one of the toughest regions, uh, in the state. Uh, you know, the Shiners or Furios, the Masons loom large. Um, have you given that any thought? Has your team given that any thought or is it just one game at a time? Uh, well, of course, of course, we've talked about in the office and yes, I know it is probably, it's probably the toughest region in Mm -hmm. our classification. I mean, I think, uh, those three teams you mentioned are all in the top 10 Mm -hmm. right now. Uh, of course, Mason's number one, then Shiner and then Refurio, you know, we played Refurio last year Mm -hmm. and, uh, that round two. And so, um, but at least our kids are familiar, but I think, like I said, it's a different attitude. Uh, the kid like Hearn was a big game Mm -hmm. just in confidence building for us uh but we know that it's week one and like and like you said we're not overlooking marlin at all uh they're very talented uh they just they just have a number rough year i guess you would say Mm -hmm. and so you know we're preparing for them and not worrying about who's next really Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to go scout because the the next district our first opponent didn't really decide it yet Uh, so we're going to go watch them play this week and uh, see who see who we're gonna play against first round. There will be a lot of eyes on that center port uh, or that that junction in Brackettville game uh, next week for yes, sir. Uh, for, for, yes, sir. The, uh, for the Thorndale Bulldogs and their coach Scott Hawkins. Coach, really appreciate your time. Congratulations again on the big win last week and your great start. Uh, best of luck next week against Marlin and in the playoffs. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having us. There he goes, Scott Hawkins, the head coach, Thorndale Bulldogs. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize it that they had that game against Dawson canceled too. Yeah. So they've basically had they've played they've been this they're is fresh the, baby. This is the tenth week of the <laughs> right, year. Yeah. This is the tenth week of the year, and they have played seven ball games. Whew. The triple bye. Right. Good if you can get it. But uh, and by the way, by the way, their one loss is a one point loss on the road to Holland, who is seven and one. This team's legit, and that he, he mentioned Lucio, their 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 their, their running game, uh, that slot T. Uh, it sure seems like everyone's really bought in uh, on that, and, and this is not a uh, Rubio rather. Um, uh, their their running back Jagger Rubio and, and Scott Guzman. Um, a number of they've got a number of weapons that you can do. Uh, Leshber, Luke Leshber, is, that's a name that resonates in the Thorndale area. Um, this is a, you know the, the slot T is is tough. It's tough for people to defend. And we talk about it a lot that styles make fights. And going into the playoffs, they got the bye week this week. They're going to take on Marlin. They'll be pretty heavy favorites next week. That's a Marlin squad that's really struggling. Uh, and then they're into the playoffs. And a lot of the talk, when, when we do this bracket breakdowns in, in a week and a half here on Texas Football Today, a lot of the talk about about this um, the, about 2A Division One bracket is going to center on Region 4, and it's going to center on teams that aren't Thorndale. It's going to center on Shiner, Refurio, and Mason. Do not sleep on this team. I think this team is dangerous, and I think that they have a chance to really make some noise and really turn some heads. They've already turned some heads, I think, this year under their coach, Scott Hawkins. We appreciate him hopping on with us.